Shining light into the darkness, this is the Hamilton Corner on American Family Radio. Welcome back to the Hamilton Corner here on American Family Radio. Oh boy, it's going to be one of those shows today, I'm going to tell you now. Um, Let's jump into it, shall we? So yesterday, during the president's press conference, uh, updating the nation on the Wuhan coronavirus, And yes, I will continue to refer to it as the Wuhan coronavirus. Primarily for two reasons. One, because it's accurate. That's where it came from. The Wuhan province in China. Secondarily, as you're about to hear, because there were specific efforts by the communist Chinese government to blame the U.S. military. Yes, the U.S. military for the spread of the Wuhan coronavirus, which is complete misinformation, disinformation, and lies. And there's a third reason that I'm going to get to in a moment that you want to hear. Uh, But just to give you a little backdrop, I want you to listen to this exchange because a reporter asked President Trump, why do you keep referring to it as the Chinese coronavirus? Isn't that racist? And look how the president responded. It's clip number four. Well, China uh, was putting out information which was false that our military gave this to them. That was false. And uh, rather than having an argument, I said, uh, I have to call it where it came from. It did come from China. So I think it's a very accurate term. But no, I didn't appreciate the fact that China was saying that our military gave it to them. Our military did not give, give it to anybody. Critics say using our phrase creates a stigma. Um... No, I don't think so. No, I think saying that our military gave it to them creates a stigma. So the follow-up question, after the question about the racism of referring to it as the Chinese coronavirus, does it create an, a stigma for Chinese people? No! Did referring to Ebola as Ebola create a stigma for African people? <laughs> Did referring to the Lyme disease as a Lyme disease create a stigma for people from Connecticut? I mean, come on, man. People know the difference between the communist Chinese government and individual people who have Chinese ancestry. I mean, come on. Uh, but there's an additional reason, an additional reason that I want to convey to you today. Now, I have some information I'm going to go through with you today that actually I've been having for quite some time. Remember Monday, I said I had a lot to say. I wasn't going to say it all Monday. Um, I've been holding on to this for quite some time. One, I wanted to have the opportunity to vet the information that I received. Two, I wanted to make sure I had not I did not want to contribute to any additional emotionalism. Uh, But I think you need to know this information. So I am holding in my hands a press release from the Department of Justice from January 28th, 2020. January 28th, 2020. In this press release, The United States Department of Justice announced the arrest and charging of three different individuals. One, an American citizen, two, Chinese citizens who have been granted J-1 visas to come to our country, who were working in both economic and biomedical espionage against the United States of America. One of them working, get ready for this. For the Wuhan University of Technology. From where? Wuhan, China. I want you to listen closely. Listen closely. You need to gather some people around you to listen closely to this audio I'm about to play for you. Because this is from the Department of Justice's press conference. When they announced these charges back in January. Listen closely to clip number three. We're here to announce three separate cases highlighting the ongoing threat posed by Chinese economic espionage and research theft in the United States. Federal investigators at the Lexington home of 60-year-old Dr. Charles Lieber moments after his arrest at his Harvard office. The complaint alleges that Dr. Lieber signed a contract with the Chinese University in Wuhan and was paid up to $50,000 per month, plus up to $158,000 in living expenses. 
the chair of Harvard's chemistry department. He also allegedly received more than one and a half million dollars to set up a research lab in China, all while working at Harvard and receiving multiple research grants from the U.S. Department of Defense and National Institutes of Health. Also charged today, two Chinese nationals, 29-year-old Yang King Yi, who worked as a scientific researcher at Boston University. Who failed to mention on her visa application that she is also a lieutenant with the People's Liberation Army. 30-year-old Zhao Zong Zhang worked on cancer research at Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center. For trying to smuggle vials of biological material out of the United States to China and lying about it to federal investigators. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? Now, I want to be clear. I'm not saying that these individuals are directly responsible or directly participated in the proliferation of the Wuhan coronavirus. What I am saying, what I am saying is that I think it's critically important that the American people know that the communist Chinese government is involved in this level of espionage and sabotage against the United States of America. When I said on this program, was it yesterday or the day before, that I don't like China, I don't mean I don't like the citizens of China. I'm talking about the government and its communist party. That means the United States of America, no good. These folks have no interest in being friends with the United States, they are committed to global dominion. Straight up. And this is what I want to know. Why is not media talking about this? Why isn't anyone talking about this? When these indictments and things occurred, what was happening in our country, we were talking about impeachment. And right at about the time this happened, President Trump moved to close the American borders to Chinese flights coming into the country. Why? Because the Wuhan coronavirus was breaking out in China. And did I, I had told you this already, China protested vehemently against the U.S. closing our borders to them. They didn't want it to happen. You want to know why? Because they're engaged in this. And I want to give you <laughs> some details. And again, I... I've, I've been sitting on this and wondering what is going on in our country. And then, and then you find that the United States talk is like media outlets are joining with Chinese propagandists. Cause the first people to say that referring to the coronavirus at based on this place of origin was the Chinese government. They were the ones who started saying that president Trump is xenophobic and that it's racist and things of that nature. Then our media picks it up and starts running with it. But they won't even tell you about the Department of Justice arresting people who are involved in conniving and contriving and conspiring against our nation. Let's get into some details, shall we? Let's start with Dr. Charles Lieber. According to court documents, this is not Abe's opinion. These are court documents that have been filed that are public record. In the federal district courts, according to court documents, since 2008, Dr. Charles Lieber, who is 60 years old and who's also the chair of Harvard University's chemistry and chemical biology department. Mm. Since 2008. Dr. Lieber has received more than 15 million dollars in grant funding from the National Institutes of Health. You know, the same outfit that Dr. Fauci is ahead is head of. That is quarterbacking our response to coronavirus. Dr. Charles Lieber, the 16 year old chair of the chemistry and biology department at Harvard, has received over 15 million dollars in grant funding from the National Institutes of Health and the Department of Defense. Now, these grants required Dr. Lieber to disclose significant foreign financial conflicts of interest, including financial support that he might receive from foreign governments or foreign entities. Well, unbeknownst to Harvard, Beginning in 2011, Lieber became a, quote, strategic scientist, a strategic scientist, guess where? At the Wuhan University of Technology. I'm just let that simmer for a little bit. I'm going to take my time with this. 
Because again, I'm not trying to say that these are the direct people responsible for the Wuhan coronavirus, but it sure doesn't, it sure doesn't pass the smell test. He became a strategic scientist in 2011 for the Wuhan University of Technology in China and was a contractual participant in China's Thousand Talents Plan from about 2012 to about 2017. Now, a good question some of you maybe have, may have right now. Well, hey, what is the China Thousand Talents Plan? I'm so glad you asked. China's Thousand Talents Plan is one of the most prominent Chinese talent recruitment plans that are designed to attract, recruit, and cultivate high-level scientific talent in furtherance of China's scientific development, economic prosperity, and national security. These talent programs seek to lure Chinese overseas talent and foreign experts to bring their knowledge and experience to China and reward the individuals for what? For stealing proprietary information. That's the Chinese Thousand Talents Plan. China pays for people, many of them American citizens, including as well as Chinese expatriates, to steal critical data to bring it over to China. And Dr. Lieber at Harvard has been doing this since 2011. And look, there's a contract. It's in writing. Under the terms of Lieber's three-year Thousand Talents contract, Wuhan University of Technology paid him $50,000 a month. <laughs> it paid living expenses up to 1,000 Chinese yen, which is about 158,000 U.S. dollars. And awarded him, here's the key, awarded him more than $1.5 million to establish a research lab. Where? In Wuhan, China. At the Wuhan University of Technology. Yeah. In return for all these goodies that Dr. Lieber got from China, he was required to work for the Wuhan University of Technology for not less than nine months per year by declaring international cooperation projects, cultivating young teachers and PhD students, organizing international conferences, and applying for patents and publishing articles in the name of the Wuhan University of Technology. Now, I wonder how many students and Ph.D. students and other doctors that T Dr. Lieber was working with in his coordination with China. The criminal complaint against Dr. Lieber, look, and this is only one of the three, alleges that in 2018 and 2019, two years in a row, that Dr. Lieber lied about him being involved in China's Thousand Talents Plan and his affiliation with the Wuhan University of Technology. On April 24th, 20, 2018, during an interview with investigators, Lieber stated that he was never asked to participate in the Thousand Talents program, but he wasn't sure how China would categorize him. And Lieber also caused Harvard to falsely tell the National Institutes of Health that Lieber had no formal association with the Wuhan University of Technology. Dr. Charles Lieber has now been indicted in federal court for this. But wait, there's more. Up next. Yang King Yi, now this is a woman, 30 years old. Let me make sure I got the right one. 30 years old. Yang King Li, Yang King Yi is right now a lieutenant in the People's Liberation Army of China. By the way, that's China's army, in case you didn't know. She's also a member of the Chinese Communist Party. She was admitted to the United States on a J-1 visa. In her application, she falsely identified herself as a student. And she conveniently left off that part about, eh, you know, I'm in the Chinese army. I'm a lieutenant working for them. She kind of left that out. And she specifically had a position at China's National University of Defense Technology, which is a top military academy directed by the Communist Party of China. Well, guess where Yang King Yi was? And all of this is all in the Boston area. She was studying at Boston University's Department of Physics, chemistry, and biomedical engineering from 2017 to 2019. Yet at the same time, while she's in Boston, she's also uh, working as a lieutenant for China's army. Yeah. Conducting research, assessing U.S. military websites, and sending U.S. documents and information to 
China. According to the court documents, on April 20th, 2019, federal investigators interviewed Yi at Boston's Logan International Airport. At the airport. During the interview, Yanking Yi said, oh, I have, I have minimal contact with the military academy in China. When they searched her electrical devices, it demonstrated that at the direction of some of her senior officers, a colonel in particular in China, Yi had accessed military websites, researched U.S. military projects, and compiled information for the Chinese army on two U.S. scientists with expertise in robotics and computer science. Furthermore, a review of her WeChat conversation, that's one of the Chinese social uh, software, <laughs> it shows that Yi was collaborating with the Chinese Military Academy on a research paper about risk assessment, about a risk assessment model designed to decipher data for a Chinese military application. Now, here's the kicker. Yang King Yi is no longer in the U.S. She's back in China. Yeah. Kind of let that one just slip right out of our fingers. And if you think that's something, you want to stick around. Because I'm going to next talk about a guy by the name of Zhao Sung Zhang. 29 years old. What did he do? I'm sorry. Yang King Yi was 29. Zhao Sung Zhang is 30. Zhao Sung. Good old Zhao Sung. You know, double Z's. He didn't do much but attempt to smuggle 21 vials of biomedical research on an airplane. But the feds caught him before he could escape. Now he's in jail. Now he's been in jail in America since December 30th of 2019. But I'm idiots and talking about it. I wonder why. We live in an ever-changing culture that continues to fall away from its moral foundations. The AFA Journal provides a Christian perspective on current issues that are important to your family. Produced by the American Family Association, this monthly magazine is full of articles and stories about people who are making a difference in their community and around the world. Sign up today and receive a free six-month subscription. Visit afajournal.org or call 1-800-326-4543. The Hamilton Quarter Podcast and One Minute Commentaries are available at AFR.net. Back to the Hamilton Quarter on American Family Radio. Welcome back to the Hamilton Corner here in American Family Radio. Abraham Hamilton III here. And as you probably can tell, we're not going to take calls today. Because I still have more information to share with you. So when we left off, we turned to 30-year-old Zhao Zhang Chang. Zhao Zhang Zhang, who's a guy. So Ya King Yi was a girl, a female. This is a guy, 30 year old, 30 years old. In August of 2018, Zhao Zhang Zhang entered the United States on a J1 visa and conducted cancer cell research at Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center in Boston. You notice all three of these people are in Boston. He conducted this research from September 4th, 2018 to December 9th, 2019. The allegations in the indictment that ultimately led to his arrest is that Zheng stole, on December 9th, 2019, Zheng stole 21 vials of biological research and attempted to smuggle them out of the United States aboard a flight destined for where? I'll give you a guess. One guess. Where was Zhao Zhang going? Where do you think he was going? He was going to China. He was going to China. Federal officers at the Logan Airport, the same airport where Ya King Yi was caught, at the Logan Airport discovered the vials hidden in a sock inside, of, inside one of Zhang's bags that was not properly packaged. Now, folks, think about this. This man smuggled 21 vials of biomedical research material. And he has it in a sock. And we're talking about washing our hands and, and, and hand sanitizer and making sure you don't allow droplets to be spread. And this guy is taking these vials on a plane. <sighs> Initially, Zhang lied to the officers about the contents of his luggage. 
but later admitted he'd stolen the vials from the lab at Beth Israel. Zhang stated that he intended to bring the vials to China to use them to conduct research in his own laboratory and to publish the results under his own name. Stranger than fiction. I don't know how many people saw the, 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 the series Russians where they had Russian spies acting like they were Americans. Uh, but folks, this is not TV. This is real. This is real. Yet they want you to believe that President Trump calling the Wuhan coronavirus is racist. Listen, I know I've been beating this drum consistently, but it's time for the United States of America to decouple our economy from China. They have built themselves into a global behemoth using American money. They have found a way to scheme our visa system. All of these people, they weren't in the country illegally. They were granted J-1 visas. How does that make you feel? And thankfully, Zhao Zhang, he's in jail here in the U.S. He's been incarcerated since December. But I got questions, man. Why, why aren't we talking about this? Why is our media refusing to discuss this? I think it's worth a conversation that, oh, the pandemic. And look, you know they're talking about the pandemic. You can't, you can't escape conversations about the coronavirus pandemic. But nobody will mention that Dr. Charles Lieber was working with the Wuhan University of Technology. <laughs> Got paid over a million dollars. And then you connect a few dots. Do you guys know that when the Wuhan coronavirus began spreading, that China in intentionally crushed any dissemination of information? Did you know that? There was a Chinese doctor who tried to post on social media saying that, yo, this virus is crazy. The U Chinese government forced him to retract his statements and to say that he was lying. He disappeared, and then he's dead from the coronavirus. Died. Oh, yeah. I have his name. Oh, let me give me a second. I'm going to get to it. I'm going to get to it. Oh, boy. Where did I put it? I know what's in here. Nope, not that one. The Chinese doctor who tried to, to discuss it. Let me find it. I got to find this. Nope, not that one. I'm going to find it, but let me keep keep talking in the meantime. I don't know where I put it. I thought I brought it in here. I think I got it. Yes, here it is. Chinese ophthalmologist Li Wenliang. That's his name. Li Wenliang. <laughs> and he wasn't even talking about it in public. He was talking to fellow doctors. Talking to fellow doctors about the coronavirus in an online chat room. This is in December of 2019. The Chinese government forced him to come out and say he was making untrue statements. Then the next thing you know, Dr. Wen Liang disappeared. Then he's dead. Then when we, as the United States of America, got wind of the Wuhan coronavirus, President Trump wanted to immediately shut our border to travel from China. Guess what China's immediate response was? Oh, no, don't shut the border down. Why would you want to do that? Huh? Could it be that they wanted to continue their espionage activities? Now, these are three that were caught. Can you imagine how many have not been caught? And this, they had penetrated successfully the chair of Harvard University's chemistry and biology department. Folks, no, this is not a movie I'm talking about. This is real life. This is why I will continue to call it the Wuhan coronavirus. I mean, are we going to just act like we don't know that, huh, for some reason, these strange things like mm, SARS and the bird flu and the Asian flu and swine fever, they continue to come from China. Now, I know they're not the exclusive place where 
you have contagions emanating from. But I certainly can't ignore this while at the very same time we have evidence that the Chinese government is penetrating the United States of America, conscripting United States citizens, as well as sending Chinese military officers to get student visas to come to work in the fields of biology and chemistry and to send what they learned back to China. Is that just a coincidence or am I crazy? And listen, I'm not making any conclusions from that, but I'm saying certainly there needs to be some questions asked. And the only way the questions will be asked is if these are a part of the popular conversations. Why do we have a media with First Amendment protections if they are not interested at all in getting to the root of the problem? I mean, it's as if we are ignorant to the fact that China has this proliferation of these wet markets where they have pythons and bats and dogs and pit, oh, you name it, being <laughs> butchered out in the open. And they have different various reasons for it. Some of it for the price of the animals, but some of it they have these kind of, some of the people there have religious ideas about the healing capacities of exotic animals. But is, so we're going to just act like we don't realize this stuff continues to come from China? I'm like, come on, man. And then, then you want me, you want me to embrace your hysteria about a pandemic and completely reject all of my conservative fiscal values so we can have bailouts because our economy is being shut down. Well, y'all won't ask any questions about what's going on with China. You want me to upset everything about our lives, upset everything about America, and y'all won't ask any questions? Nobody has any questions for the president doing the press briefings. Sir, there was an, a, a Department of Justice press release back from January 28th that showed there was at least three people working in concert with the Chinese government in the fears of biology and economic espionage and biomedical espionage. Nobody has any questions about that. But you want me to social distance. You want me to say, oh, I can't gather for church and worship with the saints of God. Come on, man. This is crazy. And if I said Charles Lehman, I didn't mean Lehman. I meant Lieber. Charles Lieber. L-I-E-B-E-R is his name. Charles Lieber, 60 years old, chair of the Harvard's Departments of Chemistry and Biology. Man, I'm telling you. <laughs> so, so, so we have these things going on. And so you want me, because I completely oppose the, the bailouts, the bank bailouts and tarp under Barack Obama, but you want me to recognize, well, Abraham, we're, we're, we're in a, such an emergency where we have to now bail out the airlines. So, no, so nobody is going to advocate for fiscal conservatism and responsibility. Nobody knows about Dave Ramsey's emergency plan, save, save money. Nobody's saving money. We're just going to depend on the government. Man, listen. <laughs> I'm not buying it, man. I'm not buying it. I told you, I don't like the Chinese government. They mean us no good. We have got to wake up. We cannot be so consumed and worship at the altar of free trade where we are willing to allow the demise of our own nation as a sacrifice to free trade. It should be more of a conversation about fair trade. And you realize you probably shouldn't trade with somebody who's bent on destroying you. I, the same, I argue vehemently about the church of God opposing the adoption of critical theory, critical race theory, and intersectionality. Why? Because the authors of these ideologies squarely had the, in their intentions to destroy the Lord's church. Apply the same rationale to the Chinese government. Why are we playing footsies with these people? When they've gone on record saying, you know what? We want to take America down. They know the coronavirus started in Wuhan, China, but they're going to start with propaganda saying the U.S. military started it. What? What? And at the same time, we've given them access to over 95% of our antibiotics. Wake up, man. This, this, this is crazy. This, this is, this is crazy. I need to calm myself down. I'm serious, man, because 
uh, all of these things, they're more than willing to want to, to cause us as the American citizenry <laughs> to completely <laughs> upend our entire lives. Yes, work from home. Oh, social distance. Don't gather in groups of 10. Listen, I got five children. We have another baby. They're going to talk about need to social distance myself from my own babies, my own children. That ain't happening. At what point do we realize, man, that's a little too far? In the blink of an eye, we're going to now just, the Federal Reserve injects one and a half trillion dollars into our economy. Didn't do much. Now we're going to pass a trillion dollar stimulus emergency spending bill. Like, I'm like, come on, man. But nobody has any questions about Dr. Charles Lieber. <laughs> nobody has any questions about Yang King Yi, who, by the way, is back in China. I got a, a press. Some, let me get in the press room. President Trump, I have a question. Can you lean on Xi Jinping to extradite Yang King Yi back to the U.S. to be tried for her crimes that she's been charged with? President Trump, I know that Zhao Zhengzheng is in jail. He's in federal custody. Has he been set for trial? I mean, come on, man. These people have, they have ill intentions toward us across the board. Across the board. Nevertheless, we're going to play footsies. We want to get trade deals. And look, I'm not, I'm not saying burn everything down. I'm not saying come in, you know, with a flame torch, put a flame to everything. But we at least, at least need to be sober-minded about who it is we're dealing with. Because most people, we don't understand. Every time you pick up an item in your house that says made in China, guess what they're saying? Got them, coach. Got them. They need us. They need us to make their stuff. These people, look, this, I'm, tra I'm, I'm paraphrasing, but this is, these are the things they say about the U.S. in their own media. I'm not saying they say it every day, all day long, but they say things like this. The, 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 the era of American dominance is soon to come to an end. They've done things against our military through sonar experimenting. What do you think they're building up these fake islands in the South China Sea for? And they have this massive amount of military men. They're endeavoring to dominate the U.S. by establishing supremacy in outer space. Do you realize the reason why President Trump started the Space Force? Is because China realized, oh, the U.S. doesn't have a lot of satellites. We need to, we need to <laughs> penetrate the universe with our satellites in an effort to cause them not to be able to get their GPS, their GPS systems and locators up and running. Because once we get them, their military will be blind. Do y'all know that? Why don't we know this? Why isn't this more a part of our conversations? I'm just telling you. You go look it up for yourself. I'm going to post this link to this Department of Justice uh, press release. So you can know this is not Abe's opinion. You can find this for yourself. Circulate it with your friends. But we need to realize China is not our friend. And we need to deal with them as such. Otherwise, we'll face the consequences. The views and opinions expressed in this broadcast may not necessarily reflect those of the American Family Association or American Family Radio.